Hey guys, today I wanted to show you a mindfulness activity slash craft that I've been working on. Um, We've been talking in our guidance classes before the dismissal about different ways to calm down when you're having some of those strong emotions. Uh, some of you had even started researching different mindfulness or calming tools and activities. Uh, and in some of the classes, we'd been talking about mantras and mindful breathing and things like that. So I wanted to introduce you guys to uh, labyrinths. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, today I have the directions following this video to make a artistic finger labyrinth. And I'll show you how we'll use this in an upcoming video. We'll do another mindfulness video with Enzo probably. And I'll show you how this can be used. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about labyrinths today. So there's been this connection between labyrinths and mindfulness, and it's gone back for centuries. Um, labyrinths, sometimes people confuse them with mazes. They're actually really different. Mazes have multiple entrances. They're confusing. There's different choices that are sort of meant to lead you down the wrong path. Um, if you've ever been in a human maze, the walls are built really high so that you can't see. They're really fun to do and they're meant to engage the left brain, the left side of your brain. And the left side of your brain in general is responsible for those parts of your brain that help you with problem solving, logic, math, science, things like that. A labyrinth, on the other hand, is a spiral course having a single unwinding broken path from the outside leading into the center and then back out to the outside and it's used to calm and relax. It's meant to enhance the other side of your brain, so the right side, and those are the parts of your brain that are responsible for creativity and the arts. So today we're gonna make, a lot of times people will make a labyrinth actually outside and I'll put together some pictures to share with you and, and share a link. Um, but if you don't have the materials to go outside and with stones make your own labyrinth, we're gonna be making finger labyrinths that you can use inside. So a finger labyrinth, it's similar to a full-size labyrinth um, that you would walk, except it's much smaller, so you can carry it around with you, you can keep it inside. The user, how it works is you trace your finger starting from the outside and you walk the pathway around until you get to this center point. And then once you get there, you walk it back out. So when we talk about mindfulness, the focus is often on bringing your attention inwards. That's why we close our eyes and we focus on our breathing. We try and block out those distractions. The same is true for labyrinths. That's sort of why these are used for mindfulness and meditation purposes. Um, as you walk the path or trace the path inwards, you're trying to focus inwards, blocking out those distractions, thinking about your breath, thinking about your thinking. And then once you get to the center, you walk the path back out. And when you walk it, walk it back out or when you trace it back out, you're opening yourself up to those distractions, but hopefully bringing some of that peace with you. So research says that walking, mindful walking in a labyrinth or tracing a labyrinth can really be helpful in calming, relaxing, anxiety or sadness, um, and also helping you focus and concentrate. So I hope you like this activity. Uh, all the directions will be following me. I actually got this activity from online from, I believe her name was Heather Plett. So I will link that in there in case you want her step-by-step -step instructions. I'll put that, I'll put that in the handout that I um, include with this. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope um, it helps you feel kind of calm and focused. And again, I will do another video with actually using this in one of our mindfulness videos coming up. Okay, I hope you have fun. Okay, so the materials that you'll need for this project are um, a piece of cardboard, uh, I think probably like six, in six inches by six inches or five by five, a square piece looks nice. This isn't totally square, but any piece of scrap cardboard works great. 
You need scissors, some yarn, doesn't matter what color, paints, two or three of your choice, a cookie sheet just for catching some of the paint mess, some tissue paper or newspaper, whatever you have lying around, scrap paper to practice drawing your labyrinth on. As you'll see, the first couple of tries aren't always perfect. And then some glue, Elmer's glue or Mod Podge. If you have this at home, that's great. But if not, we can use this to make something kind of similar. All right, let's get started. All right, to begin, I'm gonna show you how to draw a seven circuit labyrinth. So you start like this, you draw a plus sign in the center of your page. And then, so just a plus sign like that. And then you're gonna add an L shape into each of the different quadrants. So you have one, two, three, four quadrants. So you're gonna add an L shape into each of the quadrants. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a dot and you wanna put the dot almost as if you had drawn a square. Do you see how if that had made a square, my dot is in this top corner. Um, we don't actually want the square there. So you'll imagine that this is a closed square and that dot represents the fourth corner. You can go ahead and do that for each of them. So this is where you're starting. You should have this base before you begin to draw the channels or the pathways for your labyrinth. And how you'll start is you're gonna come to this middle point right here. And you're gonna connect this middle point to that first square. This will be the center of your labyrinth. Next, you're gonna just make your way around this drawing counterclockwise, starting from each point and connecting it to the next point. So this point is the edge of this L shape, but this point is the dot. So watch me, I'm gonna start at this edge and I'm connecting it to just whatever point comes next. For this one, it was the dot. Then I'm gonna start here with this dot and again, I'm gonna make that same connection coming around. And I may have to, for some of these, I may have to make the line bigger, but there I go, connecting that point to this point. I wanna make sure all of my pathways are about the same thickness. So this one got a little wonky, but I'm trying to keep them all about the same thickness. So now I'm starting from this point and I'm gonna draw that wall out a bit more and create almost like a rainbow effect. Bring it around and then see how these two points couldn't really connect unless I drew this line out. So I draw that line out. Same here, I'm gonna draw it out. Rainbow effect over. And bring it in to connect to that point. Going out and around. And I bring it in to connect. All right, just a few points left. Draw it out and around. Oops. Bring it in to connect. And then I've sort of run out of room, so that's why we started with this scrap piece of paper. So this last one won't be perfect, but that's okay because we're just practicing and see how I ran out of room up here at the top. That's okay, I'm just gonna pretend, draw it out and around and bring it back in and connect. So this is where the labyrinth starts and right here is where the labyrinth ends. So if I was using my finger, I would trace and I would follow the different pathways all around until I reach the center of my labyrinth. So you can see 
Now I've reached the center. So here we just practiced. We used a piece of scrap paper, which is totally fine. Um, once you feel like you really know how to draw the second circuit, seven circuit labyrinth, um, you can use then, you can then get a piece of cardboard. And so here we go. Um, I, once I felt really confident drawing, um, I used a black marker and I drew it on top of this piece of cardboard and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so once you have your labyrinth drawn on your cardboard or paper, whatever you're using, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna trace it with the glue. So you can start sort of how you did before and you're gonna trace right along the black marks and you don't need a lot. So you're just gonna go ahead and go over what you've already done, but now you're gonna add some glue. Okay, so now once you have everything outlined with the glue, you're going to come in with your yarn and you're gonna do kind of the same thing. So again, you can start from the center, you could start from the outside, wherever you like, and you're going to, um, using your yarn really carefully, outline your labyrinth on top of the glue. So it's a little tricky, you kind of have to spin it as you go, just sticking it to the glue. Um, and it doesn't have to be totally perfect. Um, just stick it as you go, keep spinning until you've used up all your yarn and you've made it connecting to that center point. Okay, so now you have it all outlined. Um, it is a little messy. I know my fingers got kind of gluey. Um, you can just sort of play around with it now to get it to where you want it. So if you really want it lined up exactly on those lines, you can kind of move it around. Um, but again, we're gonna be covering this. So if it's not so gorgeous, that's okay. Um, we'd really just want it as like a barrier for us to, um, when we're done, we'll be able to run our finger through it. So just make sure that it's kind of where you want it. Um, and then once you have it, go ahead and set it off to the side to dry. Okay, so for this next part, it could get a little messy. So you might wanna find a um, baking sheet or you could put down some newspaper or um, if you have like a cutting board or something, for you to work off of, that might help just to keep track of some of the best. So at this point, your, um, your labyrinth with your yarn should be dry. You can set that to the side. And what you're gonna need is a little bit of a glue mixture because what we're going to do is almost paper mache the top of it. And so you can do the glue mixture by either putting a little bit of Elmer's glue into a tiny bowl and mixing in some water, or if you have it at home, um, Mod Podge works really well for something like this too. So uh, I'm gonna make just a little bit of that glue mixture. You don't need a lot because it's not a very big surface. So again, you add just a little bit of glue, close that back up. So I didn't add very much, just enough to kind of cover the bottom. And then I'm gonna come in with my water and water it down just a little. I don't need a ton of water either. So that might be like maybe a little more than a tablespoon. And then if you have a paintbrush that you don't care that much about, you can stir it together. And that'll give you kind of that sort of a quick and easy paper mache type mixture if you've ever done paper mache before. Um, this will get it to go on really quick and easy, but it'll also um, not be too thick. Whereas just putting regular Elmer's glue might be a little thick. Okay, so I have that. I'm gonna bring this back in. And then 
Probably the easiest way to do paper mache is if you have newspaper at home, you can rip that up and use that. Um, if you don't have newspaper, tissue paper works. And I have this um, fun recycled, I always keep tissue paper from gifts and things like that. So I have this fun um, glitter tissue paper that I had. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use that. And so what I'm gonna do is um, I'll put some of this paint sort of water mixture, glue, not really paint. Um, and then I'm gonna add the tissue paper on. And my hope is that it will um, cover the yarn to keep the yarn in place. Um, since I used white, you can tell that it's becoming pretty see-through, which is okay. Um, in the end, we'll put, we'll paint on top of it, so it won't matter that this is see-through. Really what we're trying to do is just get it to stick so that there's no chance that the yarn will come up and that it creates almost like these little channels in between the yarn. So go ahead and you're gonna cover the whole thing with tissue paper. You can do a couple layers if you like, probably ripping into smaller pieces will make this a little bit easier to do. And we're just gonna cover the whole thing with tissue paper. Okay, so once you've done a couple of layers, I think I did maybe two, you can do as many as you want, uh, depending on how much you want to be able to see your yarn through it. So because I used white paper, I think I did maybe two or three layers of the tissue paper. And again, because my plan in the end when this all dries is to come back over it with some paint, I'm not worried that I can see the blue. I just wanted to make sure everything was covered so that the yarn wouldn't move. Right now, it's pretty wet. And again, there's these edges that don't look that great, but it's okay because I'm gonna cut them off. So I'm gonna just leave this here to dry, uh, and then we'll come back in with the final step, which is putting some paint and making it colorful so that it's a really beautiful piece to look at. All right, once it's dry, you can go around the edges, and if you have edges like mine, you can trim them off if you want it to look neat. Or maybe if you like the way it looks with sort of the crinkled edges, you can leave them. I'm gonna go ahead and trim mine off as best I can. It's a little bit hard. And maybe at the very, very end, I'll go ahead and trim the whole thing. But for now, I'm just gonna get some of those pieces off because I don't really need them. Okay, great. So you can see that once it's dry, you can still sort of see the cardboard through it, which is okay, because I'm gonna put some paint over the top, but uh, the yarn is really in place, and there's still the channels that I can run my finger through, and it feels kind of cool to um, go ahead and move my finger through those channels. So that's what yours will hopefully look like. If you use newspaper, yours might be a little thicker, so it might, you might not be able to see the yarn quite like you can see in mine, but that's okay too, as long as you can feel it. All right, now time to paint. So I am using these types of paints. They're acrylic, but you could use any type of acrylic paint. You could use watercolor paints, probably would work just as well. Um, anything that is water-based. That's the kind of paint you want. And since I'm using this cookie sheet, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the paint right in the center here. And I'm not gonna use a lot because it's a small, it's a small drawing or a small labyrinth. And so you don't really need that much paint. And I want mine to be kind of thin because I do like the look of the yarn poking through a little bit and the because my tissue paper had some sparkles on it I liked the way that looked so I want to do sort of a radiating effect and I'm gonna do just blue and white because I like those colors so I'm gonna start in the middle with my blue because um, with a labyrinth you're working 
towards the center or from the center outwards. And so I'm just gonna start with um, doing just a little bit of paint here. And then I'm slowly going to radiate it outwards so it almost has that effect of maybe a sun. Um, of course, mine's not yellow and orange, but blue and white. So I'm just gonna start by painting with the blue and as I get closer to the outside, I'm gonna mix in some white to make it lighter blue and then lighter and then finally ending on the outsides with white. 